Oscar Wilde said, Life imitates art far more than art imitates life. When he made that statement, it was probably after looking into the future and seeing Carolina Panthers linebacker Jermaine Carter. Carter worked his way into the current starting lineup after figuring out where his two passions, football and art, intersect. It's kind of hard sometimes because when you start, you're like, man, I, this is ugly. So that's what that's, I feel like that's where a lot of people just give up because you don't understand, like, uh, it's not always going to be perfect, it's not always going to be pretty, but once you start putting all the different lines and then different shapes together, it all just puts, it puts the whole piece together. And I feel like playing linebacker is kind of the same thing. You know, you got you to gotta actually see, see the picture before it happens. So, and like I said, drawing, you got to see, the, you got to think the end before, before you can actually get to the end. Getting into the starting lineup was not a shoe-in for the former Maryland Terrapin and fifth round draft pick, but after every season, he continued his work to unravel the enigmatic nature of the position and his field presence grew quickly. Like I look at puzzles that sometimes are, you know, putting puzzles together, but I feel like that's how football is, you know, just putting all the right pieces in the right places. And I feel like in football, once you do that, you know, especially on defense, you. If you're in the right place at the right time, then everything should work out. It should, the ball should never hit. It is, everything should be right. Everybody's in the right gap. You know, everybody's fitting right. And I feel like art's kind of the same way, you know. After the first nine games this season, Carter had amassed 44 tackles and nine stunts. And while his efforts don't always dominate the stat sheets, he brings a host of intangible wealth that has been a key component in the Panthers' top-ranked defense and is grateful the team saw those gifts. Well, it all started when Luke obviously retired. You know, he, he actually retired on my birthday. It was my 24th birthday. So I'm like, man, this is a sign from God. I don't know. <laughs> I'm coming up, my, the new coaches, you know, I, I came off a game, my best game so at, at that time in my career. Uh, we lost against the Saints, but I had 10 tackles. So I'm like, man, this next coaching staff, they're going to watch that game. They're going to see what I've done. And then, Luke, like I said, Luke had retired, so I was like, man, it's my time. But uh, unfortunately, that's not how it went. You know, I had to wait uh, 10 weeks last year. I started the last seven games of the season last year, and I, there's no looking back from then. How do you manage to be the guy in frame whenever they stop the tape? And that has been, that's really been who you've been throughout the, the season, who you've been throughout your career. You may not be in ever, on every single tackle, but you always maintain being, you're always in the frame uh, once they cut their tape off. Well, it's just a lot of studying film, a lot of just knowing uh, how they're trying to attack our defense. You know, like I said, I study a lot of film. Um, a lot of times I like to watch TV copies to see, like, the, a lot of the offensive checks, a lot of like what they're saying, if they're giving dummy cadences and stuff like that, you know. So that was the, one thing I learned from Luke, uh, just to watch the TV copies, because you can learn a lot from that. So I like to, um, sometimes I'm always just doing my job to a T, and uh, sometimes that, that hurts me because I'm not, not making the big play, but I, I like to say that I'm always doing the dirty work. I'm always the one getting people lined up, like I said. Um, just being, being in the right place at the right time, just always being dependable. If the ball is, is, is it going hit in my gap, you can expect me to be right there. And I just want that to be the type of person I am. So what first propelled you into art? So I registered my first year in college, but my, uh, my fifth year in college, well, my fourth and a half, uh, I kind of had, I, I graduated, so my classes were kind of just class, just busy, busy class. I was just sitting, sitting in class and I used to just started drawing and then one day I was like, man, I'm actually, I'm actually pretty good at it. So I just took to it. And then this past, this past summer, I actually started, started painting. I started to go on YouTube, learning different techniques, different things, and, and I just kind of got really into it, you know. Uh, as far as selling the paintings, uh, I don't know if I'm at that point yet, but uh, hopefully one day, one day. So speaking to that, I mean, how does a guy who knocks people out, you know, hits people for a living, get into something so peaceful as drawing and painting? Yeah, because like in the off season, you, you, you play so you understand like you have so much time on your hands, you got to find something to do with your time. Like I will go work out and go home and 
like drawing and painting sometimes takes takes forever. So, but it just takes time. It just gives you time. You once you get locked in, it's like man, the time just starts flying. Every artist has their Mona Lisa. As for Carter, he has masterpieces on canvas as well as the gridiron. The coolest thing I think that I've painted uh, and drawn, uh, I drew a Spider-Man Miles Morales uh, from the uh, Into the Spider-Verse, I drew that. I didn't know how it was going to be, it turned out to be pretty good. What's your favorite play you've made so far? My favorite play? Ah, uh, people might hate me for this, but I, I, I'll say my time play. I, when I got the time on Melvin Gordon, when I hit him, uh, that's my favorite play. That's just that's just me. I'm like I'm a passionate person. Like if I'm if I'm gonna go lay you out, I gotta I gotta let you know about it. I got to like that's probably my favorite play so far. From the gutter, built it brick by brick. I got calluses to Is the music you listen to to get pumped up for for a game different than what you listen to when you paint or draw? Definitely, different types, definitely different types of music. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> well, for a game. I'm probably listening to 21 Savage. When I'm painting, I'm probably like listening to like Erica Badu, uh, Jill Scott, yeah. some R&B, you know, just some chill, relaxing. But the painting of Carter's journey has its origins in a time before he ever donned a Panthers jersey. If you could paint or draw anyone in the history of the NFL, who would it be? Oh, that's easy, uh, Sean Taylor. When I'm on the football field, that's kind of like my motivation. Like before every game, before I go out, I always watch Sean Taylor highlight. His energy is contagious, and I kind of just want to be that guy for my team. When I go out there, I want my energy to be contagious. I want them to follow my lead, and that's just how I looked at him.